guys, so today we're going to do a uh, short little video on the intermediate shaft in play and uh, how to get to some kind of a measurement. Uh, I'm going to be using feeler gauges to try and get there. Uh, the main thing here is that we just understand what's going on with the in play and how we get to uh, the proper equation. So let's take a look at the uh, page out of the manual that I printed out. We'll see exactly what the measurement is for this engine and then we can go from there. Okay, so there's basically everything we're gonna need here to check our in play and uh, get this guy set up. So let's look at this page out of the manual here and see exactly what it says and try to make some sense as to what they want. So it's saying here the, uh, the contact face of the intermediate shaft is arranged to stand proud of the crankcase mating surface. When adjusting axial play in the shaft, at least one paper gasket should be placed between the end plate and the crankcase. So we need at least one gasket. If the proud surface is larger, the excess play should be taken up by inserting shims available in various thickness until the axle play is measurements right here in millimeters or thousands. So basically what they're saying is you need to use a combination of either paper gaskets or metal shims to come to this equation. We can't have an intermediate shaft that doesn't have any end play. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the starting point is our intermediate shaft is all the way back and touching to the rear of the engine. Let's go ahead and look at that and see how that's done first. I'm trying to get a camera in here, a screwdriver, and I'll show you everything that's going on. A little bit difficult, but we'll try our best. So right now I've got the screwdriver placed behind the chain gear on the intermediate shaft and we can see that it's going to come forward. Move that forward a little bit. And then I can go the other direction. You can see it move back. So that's why we need to do this with the chain box off first. Alright, now we're all the way back. That's where we want to be to check our measurement. So looking at the side profile of our intermediate shaft to case, uh, what the manual is saying is that the intermediate shaft will be protruding past the case uh, with the intermediate shaft all the way back, basically. So that's is set to the rear position. You can see we have space in there. And now what's going to happen is we're going to put a gasket on there, and then we need to still have space between the intermediate shaft and this stop. Okay, so if we put our end plate on here and seat it all the way back without a gasket or a shim, we're going to have some space to take up in here. So the intermediate shaft right now is pushing against this stop. What we want is to put the gasket on and we want to be forward the desired amount, whatever that is. So this particular metal shim was the one that came off the arrangement uh, when I took the engine apart. It had a wafer thin paper gasket on this side and this side and uh, that was determined to be the correct um, distance between the two. This is approximately one-third of a millimeter. I put that on there like so and go direct. You can see that if I was to tighten down our stopping plate that we're going to be right up against our intermediate shaft. So that's not going to work. So we need to be thicker than that to have some kind of an in play in there. So this is the Victor Reince gasket that was supplied with our kit. And this actually is going to be almost right on the money for us. So you can see if we put our straight edge against there, we now have some in play in there. But there is going to be a certain amount of crush on this gasket when we torque it down. And so what they're talking about is after you have your crush, your in play needs to be those specs that we talked about or whatever the specs are for your particular engine. So with our situation, the uh, Victor Reince gasket alone with no shims is looking like it's going to be the correct uh, measurement for us. Uh, this is where we need to be. You can see we're a little bit on the thin side in there. But by the time we get our gasket crush in there, uh, we should be okay. You're only going to be able to get so much depending on uh, what you're able to obtain for your particular uh, situation. But the main thing is that we have to have some play in there. I think we're going to be right on the money by the time this crushes down. We'll have our end play. 
which is really not very much, but it does need to be something. By the time we torque that guy down, we'll still have some in play in there, and we should be within range. Okay, guys, so uh, there is the intermediate shaft in play and uh, how you get to that equation. Hopefully, I haven't confused you here. Uh, the main thing is that you do have some in play in there, and it's within that range. Um, you can do it with feeler gauges. You can do it with a custom dial gauge setup. Uh, but the main thing is that you do have some in play, and it needs to be within that range. Uh, you're going to be limited to whatever is available to you in the form of paper gaskets, uh, metal shims and uh, whatever is on the market you're able to get to get you close to that. Uh, every engine I imagine is going to be different depending on your case, depending on your intermediate shaft. Um, whatever you need to do to build up that thickness, that's how you're going to get there and uh, hopefully that's going to work for us. Okay.